Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Fire Pit Podcast. Now, this may not be the episode you were expecting, but we did get one out before the end of August, just like we promised. So you can't say that we never got you nothing, or however that phrase goes. But this may not be the episode you were expecting. We told you that Selection Section 13 would be coming this month. It's not. So you get a clip show. <laughs> Yeah, we recorded some clips for The Fire Pit Strikes Back, which was episodes 50 through 55. It was the first journey of our second season. And we had previously recorded all this commentary for each one of those skits in that particular journey. And it's just been sitting up on a shelf. So it took me about two years or so to get Tom to get me the raw cuts of it so I can get down and edit it. But he finally did it. Thank you, Tom. Now, for your listening pleasure, we get to listen to the commentary and those skits so i hope you really enjoy dan do you remember the first episode of season two you know the one we're going to be doing commentary on ghostbusters 2 right yeah okay so uh the inspiration for this skit was we gotta uh, introduce the movie shut up <laughs> okay so so this episode god damn it guys so this episode, we were watching Ghostbusters 2. Uh, it was the start of our first journey for season two. Uh, so the inspiration for this skit was the court scene in Ghostbusters 2, where uh, they're, they're on trial for blacking out New York. So uh, that was part of our uh, inspiration for the sketch and uh, whose idea was it to have Matt and Danielle come on as guests, as, at least for the sketch in this one? I think it was kind of an organic thing, because I want to say that uh, Tom may have mentioned it. And then when we wrote our initial uh, sketch, we we're like, we could have them come in. And then mm -hmm. it ended up working out well. I mean, but we only brought them in on this one just for the skits, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, we weren't ready to have them on yet to be guest stars. We had to save that for a very special movie. But yeah, so yeah, we talked and said, no, let's bring them on. Because we also didn't want to just come up with new voices also. It mm -hmm. was like, no, no, let's have someone else do it for a change. Well, I was going to say, in hindsight, too, like Matt does have that naturally gravelly voice that made him perfect to do the the judge's speech from mm -hmm. Ghostbusters, you know. Dude, he loved doing that whole burn at the stake yeah. speech, yes. too. Yeah. Like, I know in this skit, we definitely wanted to play through kind of the intro, like kind of following up the air quotes, elastic storyline that we, or universe that we establish, because playing into a lot of the stuff from the previous season, too, like the fact that mm -hmm. we were arrested at the beginning, like we lost our jobs or something to that effect. We was at a kid's party yeah. at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. This was a very busy skit. Yeah, yeah, this is this was a busy skit and and uh we, we were having the storyline of the podcast was on trial for the stuff we did in season one. Yes, yes. <laughs> the uh light murder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the bank robberies and all that well, stuff. Well that was like the punchline that they were going through remember the judge we had it written is going through and telling like trying to murder by an electric chair. Yeah. Something and then I'm like, nothing about the murders. Yeah. And then the judge is like, What murders? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. But yeah. then uh, we had a uh, our first reoccurring character. Oh, yes, yes, At yes. the time, the recently departed Sean Connery. Yeah, this was the start of a couple of different gags. So, yeah, the first reoccurring character. Sean Connery. Yeah, because Sean Connery was on the hunt for Red October. That was the last time he uh, guest starred on our podcast. Mm -hmm. And this was his first one. Unfortunately, he had passed that time. Is it in poor taste to have ghost Sean Connery show up? Probably. <laughs> But hopefully not by the time you're listening to this. <laughs> we were 
ahead of our time. We knew it'd eventually be funny. Yeah, yeah. So, what was the other reoccurring gag there, Dan? Oh, the uh, that was uh, the first instance of uh, what became another one of my catchphrases. Gross. Yes, yes. The first catchphrase officially. No, the second catchphrase. The first official catchphrase was "Oh, for fuck's sake." And those are both Dan's catchphrases, but we totally steal them from time to time. Yeah, yeah. Which we're not clever enough to come up with our own. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Accurate. Josh tried to give one for me, but... It didn't stick. No, it did not land. It did not stick, no. Mm -mm. We tried, though. It's just we're not as good at delivery as Dan is. (laughs) No, no, no. Someone has to be be the Bill Murray. The other people have to be the Chevy Chase. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately... Well, no, actually, in the perfect Ghostbusters analogy, I'm the Bill Murray. Tom is the Dan Aykroyd, and Josh is the Harold Ramis. Yep, this is accurate. I fully support... We just haven't found our Winston yet. We haven't found our Winston yet, but... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is it Rob? It, Rob might be the Winston because he, he, he's been the most frequent reoccurring guest on the show and he's smarter than he looks, which is a good Winston analogy. Rob will believe anything we say if we, as long as we pay him. <laughs> <laughs> that, Love you, Rob. Hope you're enjoying Thank your Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Yeah, we're recording this shortly after he got married, so mm-hmm. telling you when we recorded this. Oh, another thing I love about this episode is it's uh, one of the first times we started riffing and ad-libbing ending of the stinger. Yeah. Yeah. The stinger on this one is us basically paying a ghost somehow, and then Matt chimed in on it because, you know, he just he wanted to say something. And it, it was funny the way it worked, and then we just kind of rolled with it and stayed in character. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't do it often for the stinger, but I do it more often than not. I just love how the it ends and then it's like we really don't tend to end our stingers on like a haha note or really a a beat that's like okay it's done we just kind of it ends and then we're all still standing on stage more or less like um why are you still here yeah my blew up my 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 uh my courtroom i have nowhere else to go well put your pants back on like and you can stop filling up the jizz jar I think on that note, (laughs) on that note, enjoy the sketch. (laughs) Gross. Five years later. Hello, bots and listeners, and welcome to the fire pit. I'm Dan, British name Nigel. I'm Tom, British name Thompson. And I'm Josh, British name Reginald. And today we're celebrating celebrating Brian's Bar Bar Mitzvah. Your mom's full of shit. Sorry, man, but it's true. Uh Uh-huh. What's this about fire? Don't you think that's dangerous? No, ma'am. That's the name of our pod. Children's Entertainment Group. It's it's a whole thing. Yeah, you should know this. You hired us. And the nuclear accelerator is attached to your back? Uh, that, uh, was another job that didn't quite pan out, but... They are licensed. Are you sure those are safe? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. All right, kids. Who wants to have fun? We want He Man! Why do you want He Man? He hasn't been a thing for 30 years. No, he's the mean dumbass. He Man! He Man! He Man! Guys, guys, we're losing the audience. God, Dan, go go get into the He-Man costume. Oh, for fuck's sake, get chafes! Oh, thank God the clowns are here. Police, you're under arrest. Oh, shit, it's clowns. Dan, Josh, Tom, hands behind your back. You're under arrest. What for? We didn't do any... Oh, wait, never mind. Now I remember. Officers, come on! You can't arrest us. We're celebrities! Yeah, we're podcasters! We're... We're kind of a big deal. Sure you are. No, really. We fought Pennywise. We ran for office. Uh Uh-huh. If you're so big, how come I haven't heard of you? Why are you doing a child's party? Yeah, well, you know, the thing is... Yeah, I got nothing. Well, we have been on break for... a while. Tell it to the judge. No, we don't! No, please! I'm gentle! I'm delicate! Does this mean I get a refund? No No refunds! (laughs) So, uh, I guess we're going to be here for a while. What should we do? Well, I've managed to get my phone out here. Ooh. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Ooh. So, I guess we can watch a movie. I can poke it with my nose or something. Yeah, 
let's watch a movie, guys. Kitten, I think what I'm saying is that sometimes shit happens. Someone's got to deal with it. And who you gonna call? 911. Always 911. That's who you call in these situations. Yeah, but you... No! 911. I'm done, Your Honor. Tom, Josh, Dad, stand up! Stand up. On the charges of breaking into a museum, having someone kidnapped by an AI. <laughs> that was fun. Silence! Unsanctioned execution by electric chair. <laughs> no, he's still alive. Look, he's right. I mean, he's, he's right over here. Silence! <laughs> Possessing some kind of slime substance. Yeah, yeah. What what is that stuff, Tom? And and why does it keep dancing? The angrier the judge gets. If you knew what I had to do to fill that thing up, you wouldn't be asking. I'm not finished. And finally, possessing unlicensed nuclear accelerators. So nothing about the murders. What? Nothing. nothing. This court finds you three guilty on all charges. Tom, you Tom, your, your shit's twitching. That's gross. And sentence you to 18 months in a correctional facility. If my hands weren't tied by the unalterable fetters of the law, I would invoke the traditions of our illustrious forebears, reach back to a pure, sterner justice, and have you burned at the stake! Where are those bastards? Oh shit, it's the ghost of Sean Connery! Rest in peace, my ass! You owe me those photos, you sons of whores! What the hell is that? That's the uh, ghost of uh, Sean Connery. That's Sir Sean Connery! Yeah, we blackmailed him into guest starring on an episode of our podcast a while back. Yeah, we meant to give him the material back, and then we kind of didn't. I'll have your asses, you fire pit podcast. Especially yours, Josh. Your ass is specifically mine. Hey, hey, Judge, Judge, Judge. We know how to get rid of him. I'll do it. So we'll use a drop the charges. <laughs> all right, all right, I rescind the order. Case dismissed. All right, yes, we won a case. Woo hey, Sean. What? Shoot. <laughs> Two in the box. Ready to go. Ahoy, hoy! God damn it, Tom, you fucked it up again. Oh, for fuck's sake. Way to ruin it there, bud. So, we back? We're back, baby. Hell yeah. <laughs> My courtroom. High five! And here you go, sir. Pleasure doing business with you, boys. Thanks for tugging our butts out of the fire back there, Sean. Honestly, if you hadn't came, we totally would have been hosed. Gross. You're just lucky I didn't change my number. You bastards better not pull this shit again, though. Remember, I'm a ghost now. I see everything. E everything? <laughs> yes, everything. <laughs> and Tom, you're disgusting. <laughs> uh, still gross. Sean Connery out. <laughs> So how does a ghost get a cell phone reception? The joke helps if you don't overthink it. Asking Tom to not overthink is a exercise in futility. That it are. Thank you, Judge. I mean, what? <laughs> Why are you still here? Why are you in the basement with us? Shit. <laughs> I, my courtroom was ruined. I, I didn't have anywhere else to go. But could you please put pants back on? No. You don't need to fill up the jizz jar. <laughs> it was half full. I'm leaving. Yeah, Dan's already done. <laughs> My slime. <laughs> All right, welcome, listeners, to our Galaxy Quest episode. This is episode... I think, what, 51? Yep. Yep, 51. I had to look at my notes to be sure I was getting the right number. After a certain number, it does start to blur together. So this one, this skip was one of our first ampersand sessions, or at least one of our It wasn't ones. one of our first. We'd have several ampersand sessions. Ampersand really started with Hoosiers. That's right, it did. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So this skit, we came up with the idea that our characters are essentially playing... A space video game, Artemis, was the inspiration. Artemis Space 
simulator. Yeah, it's yeah. basically a Star Trek game without the Star Trek license. You get a couple of guys or girls together, people, and you LAN your computers together. Yeah, everybody gets a terminal. The yeah. captain doesn't technically need one, but basically we wanted to do that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. concept, but not that we were, none of us were the captain. No. I think we did pitch a couple of ideas but we all just wanted to be lowly crewmen in this one yeah 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 which helped because uh, my character was essentially calm he was the uhura he just reported whatever the captain was saying you never heard them the sigourney weaver character for galaxy quest yeah yes yes and dan and josh's characters were the belligerent children that wouldn't you know <laughs> stop kicking the back of the chairs and doing the whole i'm not touching you and causing everything to blow up that was the the through line for this whole one <laughs> yeah we just constantly kept fucking things up and yeah. destroying decks two through 12 and the crew is venting into space yeah <laughs> well that was the reoccurring gag was the, the crew is venting into we're venting atmosphere and the crew is jettisoning into space or something like that yeah, Dex mm. through two through twelve every time. Yeah, except and for the bridge, which was deck one and thirteen, which was our deck. Yeah, and then like so, like the first sketch was like, oh, we've engaged a hostile force, and Tom's like the obviously he's the communications guy, so he's like, you know, okay, uh, Captain says he wants power directed to forward shields, and now he wants phaser control set to weapons, and you're like on it, and then Josh's like, I got phasers all powered up, I'm like, no, I have to divert power to shields first and josh and i are like so we start, yeah. start arguing and tug we're like no 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 we're like typing really fast sabotaging like, each other and blowing each other's consoles like all the phasers are now blowing up yeah <laughs> and we have no shields decks two through through 12 are breached and the crew is venting in space <laughs> it's like, so it's like we can't agree captain wants an update <laughs> yeah that was a lot of fun to come up with that idea because it, it's like we don't fight like that in real life yeah we'll, we'll riff occasionally we'll get into it like like not actual fighting, but me and Dan will get into it. And you're going to hear later on with the slipstream episode, but we <laughs> love the dynamic yeah. where um, Tom's the straight guy and Dan and Josh are just fighting so much that it ruins everything that Tom's doing. Or yes. Tom's the one who has to act straight. Like yeah. he did with this one. Like Tom's just like, oh, I'm just, I'm going to get in trouble with him too, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 This one was just like, no, no, normally when, when it's something that's directly impacting Tom, he gets angry, flustered, and goes off the rails. When it's just something that's going to impact Josh and Dan, he'll just be the calm one, like, all right, well, you're going to let this happen. Okay, it's going to happen. Captain yeah. Watson update. Yeah, you're just relaying messages in this one. <laughs> yep. The comedic timing was important, too, because it's just like, Captain wants an update. Oh, Although this was partially inspired by, and we've mentioned this before in commentary, this was partially inspired by um, the fights between between our director josh and our editor tom oh uh, yeah, yeah. They're, not, they're not fights just... well, they're not fights they're they're tug of war between artistic expressions and um mm-hmm. and there's times where my i have to turn my phone off because you two are just going back and forth over <laughs> one sentence of a joke <laughs> This is so true. In a sketch for a podcast episode that's an hour. <laughs> it's like, like, no, it's going in. Why are you doing this? I really things? need this this line in there because it helps bring the joke full circle. The joke doesn't land with that line. No, the joke makes more sense with that line. It doesn't land. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> So, and then we're all like, like, well, I guess we're just going to have to leave it to Dan because he's going to be the third vote. <laughs> Dan put his uh, phone on mute and went to bed. <laughs> yeah. So in real life, I'm the Tom. Yes. Like, Dan, yes. like Josh and Tom are arguing over whether or not one sentence needs to be in one joke of a sketch. And I'm the one going, oh, jeez. Decks two through 12 are breached and the crew is venting into space. <laughs> so that's me. <laughs> That's me. But it's all good. It's all in good fun. I mean, like I said, we don't fight fight. Like we're not hateful towards each other. But no, I mean yeah. it happens. When you're doing an when you're doing a project together, the three of us, it eventually someone's gonna have to give up an idea and the other one's gonna get their way. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, we got we gotta be really good about when there's a disagreement between Tom and I that we make Dan make the final decision and we abide by that. Because it's never been any other way. No, no. Dan has always been the guy who has to do the deciding vote. Yeah, which is why I'm the producer. So. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm the editor, Josh is the director, Dan is the producer. Yeah, I'm I'm the one that's like, okay, fine. And then I'll 
read what they have written and i'm like i like i think the, the sentence should stay and then tom's like damn it all right fine i'll put it back in or i'm like yeah the sentence has got to go out and Tom's like all right fine and then he doesn't talk to me until thursday so it's okay dude wasn't it like back to back when we did it was the sean connery sketch and then the immediate next step or next sketch after that we had like two big not outbursts but tiffs Yes, creative differences. It was, uh, I can't remember, it was like a rule of three thing that didn't need a rule of three. It's like, no, it needs rule of three. It's like, no, it doesn't. Before we close out, because this is where we get the inspiration for these sketches where the three of us are arguing, uh, the three our three characters are arguing. And you'll hear that later again. I work later hours than these two. I, I work in the late morning to the early evening. They work, uh, you know, you guys have a regular like seven to four, or eight to five kind of hours. And I work later in the day. So I don't wake up to go to work until like 10 o'clock in the morning. And there's one time I woke up to get ready for work and I looked at my phone and there were 65 Facebook messages on there. <laughs> and it was between eight and 10. You guys were going back and forth about something. And all I did was just turn my phone back off and I'm like, I got to get ready for work. I'll read that. I'll read that later. <laughs> it's like, it's too early for this shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The kids are fighting again. (laughs) (laughs) So inspiration for these skits kind of just find themselves more or less. And I think some of our best skits come from these kind of uh, or real life inspiration, like this one. Like, uh, yes, the best comedy is something that's inspired in real life, you know, mm-hmm. so because mm-hmm. like if it wasn't for this is easily I, I love all the skits in this journey, but this is one of my favorites in this yeah. journey. Uh, I loved it. I loved coming at this script because we haven't so when we still haven't as of this recording done a Star Trek movie yet. And this was so far the closest we've gotten to a Star Trek movie being able to do the Artemis Star Trek kind of bridge simulator and doing like basically playing lower decks kind of Star Trek characters in a sketch was like, I mean, come on guys. It was so natural to the three of us. It was like breathing. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, we did kind of blow our Star Trek load on this skit, but I will use the Star Trek reference here. We all like to think that if we were a Star Trek character, we'd be Kirk or Picard or Cisco or maybe even Dax or Jordy LaForge or Scotty. Let's be honest. The three of us are all Brad Boimler from Lower Decks. <laughs> like that would be us if we were all Star Trek characters. Like we're just, no. Decks two through 12 are breached and the crew is venting into space. <laughs> that's yes. our, that, that's our role in life. But enough talking about our roles in life. Let's let you listen to our roles. So yeah. Yeah. Enjoy the skit. Okay, guys, we've just engaged hostile force. Captain wants power redirected to forward shield stat. I'm on it. All right, stand by, stand by. Okay, I'm getting word for the captain. We need primary phaser control set to weapons. Secondary phasers powered up and are on standby. No, no stat. I thought we were in an operating room, Tom. Stat! Stat! It's always stat! Okay, doctor. And acknowledged. On it. No! Josh! Stop! I need to direct power to shield first. Oh, come on, Dan. Phasers are more important. No, we need power to shield. A strong defense is the best offense. You have Wait. that backwards, moron. Oh, kiss my ass. How's that for backwards? This is... I... Shit, why did power to my console die? Maybe because somebody routed power from your console to the phasers. Which is more important? Oh, for fuck's sake, are you kidding me? I... <laughs> okay, guys, 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 the shields are completely down now, and all the phasers are exploding. Yeah, I guess that's what happens when all the power is redirected to phasers, Josh. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? Uh... <clears throat> well, um... Okay, so I'm getting word. Decks 2 through 12 are breached, and the crew is venting into space. Captain wants an update. Oh, shit. Wait, what deck are we on again? Uh, 13. Yeah, 13. Oh, thank God. Whew. So what now then? Should we try to help? Or do some repairs? Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Okay, I'm getting word for the captain. We have encountered a new species. 
And apparently a dialect similar to a known species language. All right, all right, so all we need to do is route any communications we receive through a translator. Should be simple enough. Uh, okay, uh, so what's the first message we need to send? Say bye. Okay, Captain says just start with the standard greeting. Uh, we're from the Federation of Collective Knowledge Unification Pact. We come in peace. Peace. We we come in peace. Oh my God. Whew. We cannot fuck this communicate, guys. Okay. I mean, odd dialect, but uh, I think the message works. Message sent. All right, and they responded. Gonna go ahead and forward it to the bridge. And the bridge has received. Good job, guys. All right. So, oh, and. Now the captain wants us to send a message back uh, offering assistance in their colonization efforts. Just be sure to keep it simple. Okay, hold on. I've handled this kind of negotiation before. Now remember, keep it simple. Dan, I think you want to maybe rework that message because, you know, given this particular dialect and how literal these translations will go through, the way you just set it up I think it's going to come off as hostile. It's perfectly fine. Seriously, I think it could be phrased better. It's fine. Message sent. Message sent. Okay, um, guys, I'm getting word they've raised their shields. I think they took it as a hostile message. Oh, what did I tell you? <laughs> you know, it's not like that dinky ship could actually put up a fight anyway. We'd blow them out of the freaking sky. Message sent. Oh, shit. Uh... Guys, they have apparently powered up all their phasers and are demanding our surrender now. <laughs> Serves you right. <laughs> fuck around and find out. Why don't we tell them to just go fuck themselves? It's not like we're the flagship of the fleet or anything. Pissing the scrub plant people. Message sent. Wait, what? Real smooth there, Dan. Did you just single-handedly ruin this thing and then tell them to go fuck themselves? Maybe. Uh, yeah, they fired on us. Decks 2 through 12 were breached, and the crew is venting into space. Captain wants an update. Uh... Okay, guys. All we have to do is drive the ship out of space dock. That's it. Mission over. Okay. Navigation set. Uh, do we use impulse or thrusters? <laughs> Always thrusters. Impulse is for pussies. Actually, you got that backwards again there, Josh. Impulse is way faster than thrusters. Oh. Well, the opposite of what I said. Okay. You're going left. You're going left. I'm steering at the port. You're going left. You're going left. I'm steering at the port. Port is left. Okay, so decks 2 through 12 are breached, and the crew is venting into space again. Oh, and the space station has multiple breaches too. Fuck! That's it. This game is bullshit. I thought it was bullshit on hard, but we can't even beat it on easy. Oh, we should just stick to watching movies. Yeah, you really should. You guys are really bad at this. Shut, Shut up, up, Tom. Tom. <laughs> Captain wants an update. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> All right, so this is the skit for Robin Hood Pot, Prince of Thieves, the one we did with, you know, Chris, Kevin Costner, Chris, who? And Alan Rickman and uh, Morgan Freeman. This was episode 52. Yeah, this was a fun skit because we went to England during a travel ban because COVID was, you know, <laughs> neck high at this point. Yeah. Yeah, the art, art skits are not exactly what you would call topical. <laughs> yeah. Yes. This is a, I love this skit because Josh got to play the straight man. Yeah. And I got to return to England, so to speak, because I actually, it like is in the skit you'll hear in a minute, I actually did live in England for about three years. Mm -hmm. The joke in the interspersal has some truth to it. This was a fun one because I, I loved the way Tom and Dan acted, just their IQs were four. <laughs> <laughs> like to discuss in the previous yeah. uh, Galaxy Quest that we have dynamics. When it's you two, you will be you will bicker like kids, and Tom will have to be the parent. But when it's Dan and I, we are the the two friends that are just like super excited to be going to space camp, and Josh has to reel us in. Yeah. 
I love the concept for this one that I'm, I'm dealing with you guys and you're like, we're in England, James. And you're just like full on British humor. And I'm like, ooh, fish and chips. And I just trot off. Yeah. And then you get mugged. And we think it's Robin Hood. <laughs> yeah, you think it's Robin Hood and you're all excited. And then I come back and I love the way this joke just came full circle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like you guys get robbed. You smell my fish and chips like, ooh, I want some. And then Josh is just like, three, two, one. One and then you guys trot back. We don't have any money. Yeah, can we have some we money? Were... Yeah, can we have some money? Because we were just robbed. What inspired this one, by the way? I'm trying to remember. Well, the sketch was inspired by a couple things. I mean, the real life, obviously, of Josh living in England for a little while, and then him being like our tour guide, mm -hmm. like because because jo Josh was the one that he kept translating all the British lingo. Yeah, that was the uh, interspersal mostly on that one. Because I know it's like I was like, oh, I knew all these ones, but I actually had to Google phrases, and we found all these funny ones. Lori and his truck and torches, flashlight, and all that. It's like. We we th there were those ones, but yeah, you had to, like you were the one translating all the British slang, and John, Tom and I kept going, oh okay, yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense. <laughs> I would give you the bad translation. Yeah, it's like I, I think what is like, oh, are they knackered, and then Dan's like, Josh, Josh, what's that mean? And I'm like, horny. Yeah, doesn't mean horny. <laughs> <laughs> it means tired, but uh. <laughs> yeah, but we were full belligerent because in this interspersal, we're dealing with the sheriff of Nottingham. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we get arrested again for the second time this journey. What's funny, though, and like I told you, it has some truth in reality. I left England with like a 1500 pound debt and uh, to the point where it's just like I got collections and stuff. My credit in England sucks. So I could not own a house mm -hmm. it was bullshit like the people who did my gas they undercharged me for the year i lived there and then they sent me a freaking 1500 dollars bill and being oh yeah you didn't pay what you actually used so here's a bill as you're leaving <laughs> are you fucking kidding me i went to a jag and i'm like do i have to pay this and i'm like is it keeping you from getting on the plane i'm like no and they're like then you don't have to pay it and i'm like and i didn't pay it so technically i don't think i have a warrant out but I definitely have a bill. Yeah, you have a bill. I don't know if they do. Does, if we have any English listeners, do they still have debtors' prisons over there? I know that's one of the reasons my ancestors came to America. <laughs> so I don't know if they still have debtors' prisons over there. Yeah, that was that was a funny joke. And then I, I remember we were we were kind of on a, a writer's block. We couldn't figure out how to finish the sketch mm -hmm. with the stinger. And then it, Tom and I both hit at the same time our Monty Python inspired We the People mm -hmm. sketch from yes, high school like, yes oh yeah that was like flash for little history we uh we really liked monty python and we want to do a, a sketch comedy show and dan and i would spend days and weeks just coming up with skits just downstairs we had british no nomenclatures and such which was how we got the british names thompson reginald nigel and yeah i remember hanging out in the basement when you guys were coming up with those oh you were totally there yeah, we did partially explain the We the People stuff in the um, Q&A session la at the end of last season. Oh, good. Remember, we did. Yeah. We did because someone did ask, where did the British names come from? And we did explain where the British names come mm. from. But yeah, but this was just an extension of that. Mm -hmm. and, and just like Monty Python, Tom and I wrote hundreds of sketches and probably only 10 of them are funny, just like Monty Python. <laughs> Ah, funny because true. But this was, we thought, one of the better ones. And, and it was just, when we were kids, it was just a shot of the forest. And then it was supposed to be Robin Hood and Little John shouting at each other. And then the end of the joke was Robin Hood says, I don't know, John, I'm just winging it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we just decided we're going to do that bit, except now we're going to include Josh. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't see him because it's not a visual sketch, but you can, Josh basically staring at them like they're going insane. They're, they're doing it while we're all in prison. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Although and it's just, I'm like, ugh. Although in, in retrospect, it's one of those things I didn't think of until like days, weeks afterwards. Our characters were supposed to be in England for like a podcast, like convention. It should have been us talking at the convention and not in the prison, but it still worked. Oh, I like the way it ended with us in the prison because it kind of gives a little bit of closure to the sketch. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that we were world famous podcasters. We're not world famous podcasters. That's why you guys were so excited about it. But then we ended up getting thrown in prison. Yeah. Comes full circle. It's like, so you guys are sitting here acting a fool in British prison. And I'm just sitting there like, oh, just playing to the character that I was in that episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Exasperated, tired in yeah. prison. God, that was. But full on fish and chips. <laughs> God, that was a good episode. Yeah. I loved that episode mostly for all my Alan Rickman puns. No. 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 
no. You don't have to watch that whole episode. Just listen to this, this these skits. Dude, Steven. I kept coming up with them, though. Like, ton of, you could say oh, it was Alan Quickman. No. no. Dude, thank you no. for shutting him off, man. Thank yeah. you for cutting him <laughs> no. off. No. You're I done. said Alan Quickman. No. Oh, no. And thank you. Um, you? Yeah, you can go go you? watch. Go Enjoy yeah. the episode. <laughs> you I, are done. You, the audience, are just getting started. Enjoy Robin Hood. Ah, can you smell it, guys? England. Ah, it smells like armpits and defeat. How are we even here, anyways? Isn't there like a travel ban or something? Um, the joke only works if you don't think about it. But if you think it smells here, <laughs> just wait till we get to London. We're the VIP guests for the Stateside Hosts Inclusion Troop Podcast Convention. That doesn't mean we can't take in some culture while we're here. You know, live a little. Besides, it's England, James. Sherrod Forest. Land of Robin Hood and his merry men. I've lived in England before. Everybody here knows that Robin Hood isn't real. He's like England's version of Paul Bunyan or something. Yeah, it's the whole racket designed to take in dumb tourists. Oh my god, fish and chips. Oh, I missed that. Nigel, they say that if you listen carefully, you can almost hear the spirits of Robin and his merry men devising a strategy to free the land from the tyranny of Prince John and the Sheriff of Nottingham. Shh. Listen. Oi, give me your money. No, <gasps> it worked. Oh, shit. All right, I don't want no trouble. Just hand over your money. And things won't need to get messy. Oh, oh my god! It's Robin Hood! What? He's got the hood and everything! Oh! Oh, you've picked us as... Oh, what's the British term? Marks! Well, I mean, it stands to reason he'd target us. We're successful podcasters. <gasps> Thompson, I do believe we've been made to stand and deliver. Well, we mustn't tarry, Nigel. What, so we're having a laugh now? Here you go, good sir. Another thrust against Prince John and the Sheriff. Oh, uh, well, thanks. Uh, oh, five American dollars and a vote NATO sticker. Goddamn Yanks. That's freedom currency. You're welcome. Bugger off. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. that was Robin Hood. I mean, that was totally Robin Hood. That was totally Robin Hood. That dude from all the movies. God, it's as good as I remember. What are you two yelling about over here? We met Robin Hood! What? Yeah! He had a hood and a knife, and he asked us for our money! We got to help him rob from the rich and give to the poor! No, stop with the accents. You got mugged. No, we did it. That was Robin... Ooh, that looks really good. Mmm, smells good, too. Yeah, now I'm hungry. Where did you get those? Over, over, over there, but... No, but... Let's focus on you two getting mugged. We will, we will. But first food. Nigel, to the food! <sighs> Three, two, one. Um, Josh? Can we borrow some money? Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Robin Hood? <sighs> yes, they're claiming to have been mugged by Robin Hood. <laughs> That sounds like a real cock-up. Uh, <gasps> oh my god! You can tell. Guys, cock-up means messed up. Are they pissed? Oh, you're damn right we are. We do not acknowledge the authority of the usurper, Prince John, you! We shall only speak to those with true authority, and not puppets of the Sheriff of Nottingham. Long live King Richard, the true King of England! Not pissed, just stupid. <sighs> You tourists have me knackered all day. Really? Gross. Josh, what does knackered mean? Horny. Oh. Oh. So, Constable, where were we? You were just about to tell me where you were through this. I was down the street. Josh was out so looking for your thugs while the great Robin Hood made his presence known. Oh, Jesus Christ. He was here ten years ago, before your dark reign, and it all went to pot, so he knows your ways. Will you guys take this seriously? This guy's just trying to help. Viva la revolution! Pick an accent already. It's all right. Let me just run your names through the system. 
just a formality. And uh, what did you say your name was? Uh, my name's Josh. That idiot is Tom, and that dumbass is Dan. Hi. All right, Josh. Ten years ago. Huh. There appears to be a warrant out for your arrest. What? Threat will be taking you to the sheriff now. I knew it! Revolution! Robin! Robin! Robin, Robin Hood! Robin Hood! Merriman! Robin, 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 Robin Hood! Just Robin Hood! Robin Hood! Jesus Christ. Arrested? Again? Ugh. Rebellion! Hey, Robin! Yeah, John? I was wondering! You know this whole Robin from the rich and give it to the poor thing? Yeah, John, what about it? Well, what's it all about? Are we making some kind of political statement? Are we rebelling against the tyrannical fascist reign of Prince John? Are we stating that the people of England will not recognize his mad reign in the absence of his brother, the true king? Well, I... And I... what happens when the rich become poor and the poor become rich? Is it all some kind of vicious cycle? I don't know, John. I'm just winging it. Oh! Right, carry on! Righto! So what are they going on about? I have no idea. They lost the plot about two hours ago. Oh. Josh, Josh, what does that mean? It means you're stupid. Um, oh yeah, yeah, okay, that yeah, that makes sense. Righto! Righto! <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Hello! Welcome to the fire pit! <laughs> no, this was the inspiration for this sketch, um, Flash Gordon, that you're about to listen listen to. While we were discussing the movie list before we picked it, discussing Flash Gordon, and I said that Brian Blessed's whole "To me, my Hawkman" was the whole like thing I wanted to see about the movie, and I was right; it was the best part of the movie because that movie sucked. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we we kind of wrote the sketch around me just needing. Tom heard that impression; it's like we you need to do Brian Blessed impression for the sketch, so we just kind of wrote the joke around me getting a chance to do my best worst brian blessed impersonation which is basically just talk really loud so yeah and um that's that's literally exactly how it went is dan did his brian blessed impression and um we're like okay well we have the main thing we want to get to on our skit and that's <laughs> we just have to write a story about it so we all had the bare bones outline of the story mm -hmm. we couldn't come up with any ideas you always notice a theme in our skits <laughs> if the skit itself is talking about us writing a skit that means that we're having issues coming up with an idea so we always just default to us writing a skit and yeah, yeah, and this one was like it was we went so meta with it we had characters in our skit kidnap us to write their skit for them because they also had writer's block yeah yes and i loved the reoccurring gag and cold open at least where tom keeps trying to say yeah let's watch a movie guys but we all keep cutting him off yes that was great and then like the, i love the uh uh whole like finds a lube and like yeah let's watch a movie tom <laughs> <laughs> teleport like i thought that was hilarious like you could tell josh's contributions to this yeah but th that's just one of those things it's like <laughs> i give josh a lot of shit for always the defaulting sex and f dick and fart jokes blue humor blue humor yeah. but then i realized that you know what i've never really mentally progressed past the third grade so yeah a good masturbation joke's hilarious <laughs> hey know. even shakespeare even Shakespeare knew to include a dick joke in all of yep. his plays. So if the bard can do it. Yep. Oh, well, that's where the whole they get the uh, line in Romeo and Juliet. But I do bite my thumb, sir, because history shows that biting your thumb meant sucking dick back in the day. No, it didn't. Oh, Don't. Nice. History fans do not at me. That was a joke. I am uh, at Tom. Hashtag dance truth. <laughs> hashtag dance truth. Damn it. <laughs> but you know if i had to rank all of the skits in this journey i would probably put this one at the bottom but i still love this skit so i'm not saying that this is a like they're all well this like this is the worst one yeah well this was a strong journey this one was a very yeah. strong journey and wait wait till uh our next skit we'll get into yeah. that one on that one but
Yeah. This one, I, I liked this one because this this ampersand session or this writing session was a lot of fun because, like we said, we came into it and we were like, okay, Dan's doing Brian Blessed. Let's write a story. <laughs> And then it's just like, so uh, we have issues writing a skit mm -hmm. where it's, that, that's going to be another part of it or it's going to be in the skit. And uh, masturbation jokes were sold. And dysentery. Oh, yes, the dysentery. I forgot we all had dysentery. Yeah, in and the, the whole, yeah. um, was it my, my prostate. prostate when you're getting teleported? Yeah. My prostate. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that was, was the origin of that reoccurring gag. I mean, we know we hit that again on Mortal Kombat. And anytime we get teleported, oh, my prostate. Yeah. yeah, and then like I said, I got to do my best, worst Brian Blessed impression, which like I said, is just basically pretend you don't have an inside voice. It was spot on. I mean. Dude, it was. It was it was awesome. Listen to this skit, then go watch the parts of the movie, Flash Gordon, that have Brian Blessed. Please don't watch any of the else of the movie, just those scenes, and listen to them side by side. I swear you'll be yeah. liking an echo. It sounds better. I, I yes, can't do it as well tonight because I'm kind of recovering from a sore throat. But yeah, it was like, you know, to me, my Hawkman. Yeah, it's like, do that. Shout. No inside voice. <laughs> That's Brian Blessed. We love Brian Blessed. Yes. Friend of the channel. Friend of the channel. There was a lot. And there was more discussion that probably should have been necessary at the very end on the joke when Dan's recovering on which porn star we were going to use to say his head felt like. So we had more discussion on that than probably should have. What did, which one did we end up going with? Riley Reed? We ended up going with Jenna Hayes. Jenna Hayes. That's yeah. right. Okay. Sorry, Riley. We'll get to you on the next one. Yeah. Yeah. I've been pounded more than Jenna Hayes or something like, like it's really like, bad. Like she's, uh, you'll hear it in a second, but it's like my head hurts something like Jenna Hayes. I forget yeah. what it is, but yeah, yeah. She got me through the early double odds. Yeah. We have also friend of the channel, Jenna yeah. Hayes. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. That was a pretty crude joke, but she's a porn star. So it's okay. Well, considering some of the stuff that, you know, she's been in, I'm, it was an accurate description. <laughs> God damn, we're so bad. We're so bad. Tom, edit that <laughs> out. <laughs> or not, because Josh is the one editing this one. <laughs> oh, shit, it's staying in now. Josh, edit that out. <laughs> but anywho, so this is Flash Gordon. Not Flash Gordon, even though technically the skit kind of is. <laughs> the, so, the, the skit? Uh, yeah. Flash the, Gordon. Flash Gordon. The, the skit is Flash Gordon. <laughs> yes, the skit is Flash Gordon, but for the movie yeah. Flash Gordon. So enjoy. Enjoy. Dive! So what, are we waiting for future us to come back in time to write this episode for us, or what? What, like Bill and Ted? No! Uh, why not? Context. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Anywho, guys, guys, come on. Heads in the game. It's the fourth half. We're down by love. We need a grand slam to win this basket. No, stop! 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 I'm not even going to begin to unpack what's wrong there. Just but stop. it's the... Stop! But... Okay. Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. I'm leaving. What are you doing? God damn it. Where are you going? To vomit. You guys sort out the script for the podcast. God damn it. All right, well, okay, so what I was thinking for this script, what we can do here is we can just, you know... <laughs> oh, God, my what the hell? What was that? I have no idea. But, you know, let's be honest with ourselves. Stranger sounds have come out of Dan before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So do we want to wait for Dan to get back to write the script, or you, what? Yeah, let's watch him. Stop! Movie. We can't do that without Dan. God damn it! Well, I'm bored. I'm gonna get a drink. Hey, get me a beer! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Josh! Josh, I got this great idea for script. See, what we should do here is, a... Josh, buddy. Yeah, let's. Uh, uh, never mind. Why does Josh keep that lotion? Ah, there you are. <laughs> Let's watch a movie, Tom. <laughs> uh, Tom? I didn't touch it yet! Tell that man to put up his trousers! Nobody wants to see that! Gross! What? Wait, what? Are we in space? Oh, oh God! Oh, oh, oh. oh. Sorry, Josh. I was gripping the bottle too tight. Where are we? What's with the floating brains in the jars? What's going on with Dan back there? My Hawkman! Long has the moon of Neptune mocked us. Its swirling gases teased with the hopes and dreams never to be found in our waking. And why is my prostate leaking? Is that normal? Oh, don't worry about that. That's, uh, that, that'll go away after a while. Probably. It's the dysentery that sneaks up on you. What? Nothing. So Dan's being mind-controlled. 
It's uh, standard alien using a human as a microphone scenario, a la Independence Day. What? We have crossed the cosmos in search of those that can lead us in our darkest hour. Now our army of bots have found us these humans, and with them we shall finally succeed in what has evaded us for centuries. Finish our podcast scripts. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, I guess there's only one thing we can do now. Let's watch a movie, guys! No! 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 It's my time! It's my turn to say it! Now! Let's watch- Hey, wait, wait! Is that my private time lotion? Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Hurry! We only have ten minutes to save the podcast! We're typing, we're typing, jeez! <laughs> Damn, Donald correct. He helps her get an organism! Organism! To me, my Hawkman! God, if he says that one more time. Okay, Tom, help me with this punchline. Tom, we've got these two characters. There's an obstacle they need to overcome. Oh, 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 I got it, I got it. We'll use a callback. What we need to do is a... Oh, oh God, the dysentery! Oh, God. Oh, God. We have ten seconds! Wait, I thought we had ten minutes. Space minutes! Oh, Jesus Christ. Dramatic effect! It's okay. Okay, I think I can work this out. Wait. Dysentery. Space dickin- dysentery. Dickentery. Ha ha! I got it! Done! Ha ha! <laughs> well, who wants to live forever? My Hopman, Dave! We record the podcast! Uh, did we make it? Clearly you didn't, but we made it. For the first time ever, nothing went wrong. Oh god, my prostate! Again! Well, I guess we can say that we caused the annihilation of an entire alien species now! Oh god! Genocide was definitely not on my to-do list today. God, I never thought we'd get out of there alive! You know, it was going so well, too. Our skips, they were, uh, they were topical. We had good Earth-based pop culture references, you know, especially towards the end, and I thought everybody was having a blast. They got to the interspersal, and then, oh my god. Oh my god, the slaughter, it was... This was your fault, you know. No, no, you're the one who threw in space dysentery! Come on, let's be honest, it got laughs. But no, 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 you had to go and shove Roddy Dangerfield into every frickin' joke! No respect, no respect at all. Oh my god, stop that! Why are you loud? Why are we loud? Oh god, my head, why do I feel like Jenna Hayes? How, how are you doing? I mean, what, what's it like having an alien collective inside of you? That's what she said. Stop, 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 stop. I'm going to go lie down now. Okay, well, I guess that's all done. I guess we still have to do our own... Wait. What? What's with all the tissue paper? All these open tabs. Oh, Jesus Christ, Tom! Yeah, it was a while before they beamed me up. I, uh, had a bit of time to spare. Gross! Ooh, it's getting windy in here! Oh, wowzers! Oh! Hello and welcome to our retrospective on which... Uh, it's what, episode 54 now? Yeah, ep the um, yeah. the skits for episode 54, Slipstream. A hidden gem of a what's-in-the-box film with a nice hit, not even a hidden gem, of uh, one of our... More well, definitely one of our favorite skits and one of the most fun to record. Oh yeah, yeah. This is easily my favorite skit of this journey. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and again, another case of uh the real life writes the plot on this one. So the premise of this skit is Tom, my character, also me, is trying to go on vacation and Dan and Josh decide to stick or tag along and, you know, help him go on vacation. You know, help his itinerary. And what's supposed to be just a couple hours to get to where he needs to go spirals into tragedy. And it just gets worse yes. and worse. And this is another classic example of grouping in our uh, skits of Josh and Dan versus Tom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Our characters all have a dynamic and, you know, we play the how they play off of one another when it's dan and josh playing off one another it's kind of like child you know brother brother bickering and then tom has to kind of be either be indifferent because it's not his circus not his monkeys or in the case of this skit have to suffer it because it's now impacting him it is his circus and these monkeys won't calm the fuck down yeah and it's like he's going along for the ride he's on the river he's in a canoe and he can't do anything about it Mm -hmm. tom is the canoe and josh and dan are the river (laughs) they keep throwing the paddles overboard so tom is just spiraling out of control yes but this is my favorite skit yeah. for this journey and honestly probably a contender for my favorite skit for season two solely because like not i think the skit itself is hilarious but i love the story behind the skit too because this skit was birthed off of a disagreement between me and dan each one of our episodes we call it the icr the intro connections and rundown so if you're familiar with the format of our show somebody different always has the intro somebody different has the connections and rundown i always try to script that out try to schedule that in our schedule and i make sure that everybody's different I had noticed a trend that we would have, it would be like Dan would do the intro, Tom would do the uh, connections, and I would do the rundown. But at no point when Dan was doing the introduction was I doing the connections and Tom was doing the rundown. So I, I changed the script a little bit to allow for that. And Dan would change it back. So we would have this dueling banjos thing before we'd sit down to our ampersand session. So we sat down to this ampersand session to sit down and write the script for Slipstream. And the first thing is... Tom gets on and he's like, hey, guys, we might need to go on uh, do something different because I'm going to be going on vacation in a couple of months. Me and Dan completely ignored him and we started uh, in on each other's throats about why he keeps changing this, the order. And I'm telling him why he changed the order. It's like, no, it's supposed to be Tom, Dan, then Josh. And he's like, no, it's Dan, Josh, then Tom. The inspiration was because I said, no, I did intro last week. Tom did connections last week you did rundown last week so this week i do connections tom does a rundown and you do intro it goes did dan you? tom and like yeah. you're like no no the order's like that you need to check the schedule because it's on the schedule it goes tom dan then josh well your schedule is stupid and you should have told me that that's what you were doing you're like you should have checked the schedule that's verbatim by the way that is word for word how that discussion went it turned out dan was looking on like i guess you were looking on the skits themselves in the episodes yeah and josh was looking at the online document where we keep the schedule and either one or neither was really being updated honest to god what i was doing i was just going in cascading order i never changed it up so what i would do is when i would start to write the intro connections rundown i would just open up last week's episode and say okay so i did rundown last week tom did connections josh did intro oh okay so that means i'm doing intro this week tom d- josh does connections and tom does rundown okay and that's how i would start typing it up josh had a schedule at a separate document that he was using when josh makes the template for this and i just it was miscommunication <laughs> yeah. yeah and what was what i loved about it too was yes we had miscommunication and we were arguing about it but it was not one of those things to where neither of us was actually pissed about it but when we got into the ampersand session we totally uh played up the argument yeah we, we definitely leaned into it like we weren't actually yeah. upset with each other yeah it was just definitely like like playing around going no i did intro last week tom did connections last week and you did rundown you can't do rundown two weeks in a row you're not allowed to do that tom's doing rundown i was like i i I, i'll do rundown (laughs) like like, in this scenario the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing neither did the right hand the left but they both thought it'd be funny to just slap the face yeah tom being the face yeah that's another metaphor in this uh this commentary but no it it tore at the end when me and dan finally got done with the tirade we all just kind of left and we'll be like did this skit just write itself (laughs) (laughs) i think it just did 
High five. So it's like we knew, like Dan pointed out that this movie was was a road movie, which means, you know, the movie starts at A and ends at B or whatever. So we're like, okay, well, Tom's going on vacation. So it's a road skit that just goes crazy. Yeah, pretty much. And much like yeah. um, trains, planes, automobiles, and other classic road two movies, comedy of errors that ends. Well, I don't want to spoil the ending, but it ends on a high note. No, wait, no, the middle ends at the high note. The ending ends on the ending. You know, you'll, you're going to be listening to this in a little bit. You'll you'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Well, I assume that they've already listened to the skit. This is just a nice retrospective for them. But no, this was a fun one to, to record. This is a fun one to uh, write. And I, I look back on this one fondly. Yes. This, again, as said in um, our Flash Gordon commentary re- retrospective, this was a very strong season for our skits. I mean, there's not a dud amongst them. But yeah, this was very high up there. Yep. Mm-hmm very much because we didn't have a story arc this season either it's just a bunch of uh non-interconnected skits which we have occasionally yeah 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 tune in to the next journey to find out what we can do when we do connect them and do have a storyline but for now we are not promising that that's going to be the next journey retrospective skit retrospective or whatever is going to be out next you never know when this one's going to come out so (laughs) enjoy yeah it should be good mom i'm just about to drive to the airport now (laughs) <laughs> yeah, just be sure to save some beach for me. <laughs> yeah, I love you too. See you and dad in a few hours. Bye. Hey! hey, hey dummy! Yellow alert! I hate when you guys do that. Okay, um, so I'm all packed and ready for my vacation to Florida. You sure you guys going to be all right without me for a week? Um, Josh, you want to tell him? Uh, I thought that we agreed that you were going to be the one to tell him. Oh, no. Tom, we're going with you. <laughs> yep, we already packed our bags. Bags? Where? No, we just used your luggage. That's why your stuff's in the pile over there. <sighs> I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to let this... Oh, hey, let's get going on the vacation! Yay! Yeah, let's go. Come Woo-hoo! on. Yes. Woo-hoo! Yes. Uh, wait, who's driving? You know, I'll go ahead and drive first. You know, it's my car, but, you know, sure, we're all all right, shotgun. Okay, sounds good to me. We'll just trade off each stop. Yep, see, I'll be driving this time. Tom's shotgun, Dan, you're in the back seat, so it'll go Josh, Tom, then Dan, and we'll just switch it up each time we stop. Work like a charm. Yeah, I can't believe I'm agreeing to this. Yay! All right, come on, come on. Move, 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 move. We have to move. It was a 15-minute drive. Why did we have to change over that many times? Why did it take an hour? I have a small bladder. Yeah, you've also been drinking a big gulp the size of my torso. I told you to stop that. But they were a dollar twenty-nine. I mean... Give me that. Seriously, plain. Okay, whatever, but I get the window seat. Oh, guys, no, please, guys, no, not again. No, 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 Tom gets the window seat. That, that would be like the driver's seat Tom hasn't sat there yet. Oh, my God, Tom drove the second time we changed over. It's my turn now. I get the window seat. I just wanted a normal vacation. Guys, stop. There's no need to argue. No, Tom gets the window seat. Yeah, it's Tom's turn to drive. There's no driving. It's an airplane. No, Tom drove before you. It's my turn to drive. Again, airplane, assigned seats. Whatever, take the goddamn seat. But, you know, it's going to be Tom, Josh, then Dan next time. Whatever, fine. Thank you. Move. Okay, so apparently the next leg of our journey is a hang glider. Very topical. I know, right? I know it's been four days, Mom, but we just ran into some changes to the itinerary, but we should be there soon. Uh, Me and Dan and Josh. Josh. Oh, hello. Mom? Anywho, so who's sitting on the left? Oh, God, not this again. It's Dan, Josh, then Tom this time. It's been explained. No, it was supposed to be Dan, Tom, then Josh. But you screwed it up on the drive from St. Louis. Guys, we are already strapped in. Why are you still arguing this? No, no, it's Dan, Josh, then Tom. It's the order we go in because it's the one that makes the most sense. It made sense before you screwed it up on the drive. Here, look, I wrote it out on the sheet of paper and this one makes the most logical Uh, flow. Read it. uh, I am not using some scrap of paper you just made up. This is what I think of your scrap. Moving closer to the edge. Asshole, you know what you're not using because Uh, it makes sense. Guys! Not sure if you noticed, but we're now about a thousand feet in the air. 
Yeah, let's watch him. No, no, no. It's my turn to say it this week. Tom said it last week. You the week before. It's on the schedule. Well, I changed the order. Why? Because we can't do this joke again. We did it last week. No, it's stupid because you keep changing the order. We keep doing it because you changed the order. You're stupid. Yeah, let's watch him. We're on a hang glider. I had first class booked and everything. Why fly first class, Tom, when you can be in a hot air balloon? I could be on a beach, sipping my ties. Oh, come on. Think about it. You could be floating over all this awesome Kansas farmland, admiring for miles and miles. So far, you could see the curvature of the earth with your two best friends. Dad would be grilling some steaks right now. Yeah, well, we'll hop on in and we'll get to grilling some hot air. Someone in a grass skirt would be playing steel drums. I hate steel drums, but I'd be too drunk to care. All right, well, um, no, 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 Dad, no, I, I, I get, what are you doing? I, I get to run the fire thingy. God, if you're up there, please just kill me now. What? No, no, you, you drove here. It's my turn to drive. Tom gets shotgun. You get the back seat. What back seat? It's, it's a basket. <laughs> I burn the fire thingy. Now move. No, schedule says I do. It's my turn. Oh, <laughs> I'm done. Okay, I'm done. It's, it's been a week. That's my week. That's my vacation. <laughs> Vacation's over. I'm done. It's time to go back to work. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, Tom. Tom, you, you can drive. What? No, he can't. It's going to screw up the whole schedule. No, that's all right. That's all right. I'm out. I'm oh, look. It's time to get the podcast started, guys. Uh, welcome to the fire pit. Did, did he just jump out of the basket? You mean the back seat? I, I mean... Whose turn is it to get to body? Oh, for fuck's sake. No, no, no! No. No. Sorry. No. Hey, Tom. How was your trip? I, uh, almost feel weird saying this, but you kind of used up all your vacation time, so you're not getting paid for this. Anyways, I'm bored. Uh, Want to go get some tacos? Yeah, we have been here for like, what, 10 minutes? Mm -hmm. All right, so who's driving? Uh, pretty sure it's my turn to drive. I don't... All right. Well, this is the final episode of our fire pit strikes back journey the empire strikes back so this skit we uh incorporated our first guest stars onto the on our, our podcast so wink and gmp from the shattered order podcast they were our guest stars for this episode so we made this skit incorporating them into it this was a lot of fun to record because i know for me at the time i had been listening to the shattered order podcast for like three years I'd been a patron to them. For those that aren't familiar with that, what what is the Shattered Order podcast? So it was a big deal for me, but the Shattered Order podcast is a podcast that talks about the game Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. It's a mobile game on Android and I, iOS. I've played that on and off for like since it came out in 2015. So I've been a huge fan of these guys. So having them on was kind of a fanboy moment for me. We kind of played that up a lot in this skit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like maybe 5% played it up. <laughs> I that maybe 3% <laughs> if we're going to be honest, Josh. 1%. Played it up 1%. We actually toned it down. <laughs> <laughs> you toned it down. Hats off though to Wink and Punk because they're not assholes in real life and they were awesomely charming during the episode the script definitely called for them to play heels and they played they it up pretty well like this whole like they were going to take over the podcast and they're mm -hmm, just like mm -hmm. oh yeah this will work this will work just fine who are you guys yeah i, I thought they did a really yeah, good job and they, they leaned into our weirdness too it's like i think we had what, a holodeck and it was just like real time and josh was yeah absolutely betraying us actively to their confusion yeah yeah it's like wait how does this work this was a lot of fun to 
record. I remember writing this one. We wrote a draft of the script. Uh, Wink and GMP were not heels. Like, they weren't coming in. Because I remember we initially started it. GMP came on for our ampersand session, but it was mostly an introduction. So we didn't actually get into writing the skit. It was just mostly like, hey, this is GMP. Hi, I'm Josh. We're a fire pit podcast. So he just basically, basically got on to say hi, introduce himself. So we have kind of at least an introduction. So that weekend when we met, it wasn't going to be just their first time meeting us it was our first time meeting with wink but we'd met with gmp by the time we sat down to record we kind of bounced a couple right. ideas we had a very short draft of the skit and i remember i was at lowe's and i was thinking about the skit and it was very similar to what it is now but wink and gmp were not heels and i remember i came back and i messaged tom or I called tom or something what would you guys think if we gave them kind of a you know made them air quotes bad guys or something like gave them more of a role because they just showed up for no reason so it's like mm. we added it to story to make them show up like they're taking over the podcast. Yeah. Hindsight, I kind of wish we would have made it to where they were buying the podcast, like our chief was selling it. Mm -hmm. Instead of they were just coming to take it over, a hostile takeover. This That was literally a last second change. And we asked them if that would be cool, and they were totally down for it. Yeah, I mean, it did add conflict to the skit. And that's not uncommon for a lot of podcast crossover episodes, especially if one podcast is bigger then the other where it's like the bigger podcast will be the hero heels and the the newer podcast will be the underdogs and cats off to those two guys for just looking at us this fledgling young naive wide-eyed new podcast like please sir please will you come on our podcast yes it would be ever so grateful yeah, because we were just we were just about to hit a year when uh, we, this episode premiered. Like, I felt like we had a little bit of credibility at this point because we were almost at a year. We were going to be what seven episodes into season two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh boy, yeah. And it was a good get on your part, Josh. I was skittish the whole time. I'm not going to lie. It's like, are we really? I mean, they're kind of they know what they're doing. This is kind of a big deal. Are we ready for them? And we were. Yeah, I'll be honest. Yeah, I'll be honest. I was a little intimidated because uh, Shattered Order is a pretty big, popular podcast. It's a lot more listeners yeah. than we got. I was afraid that they would be kind of like, what did we get ourselves into? Yeah. Look at these jabronis. They don't know what the hell they're doing. Yeah, it's like they get they, they measure know. their downloads in the or week to week in the thousands. Uh, at the time, we measured ours in the tens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were awesome. Uh, was it Wink or was it um, who was having the recording issues? That was Wink. Yeah, Wink. Bless his heart. As one editor to another, I really connected with Wink and I was really, it hurt that he was having the worst audio issues so bad that he actually had to re-record pretty much the majority of his audio for the skits. No, he re recorded all of it. At least it wasn't all on me. Because I felt bad because I was trying my hardest to make it work. It's like, I can't do this. I have not leveled up enough for this. There, This is like a level 100 task. And I'm like a level 7. And like, please, Wink, maybe you can do something. And he, even, he was like, yeah, I just need to re-record. This is unfixable. I'd love to have them on again. Oh, absolutely. I would love to have them on again. There's quite a few more Star Wars movies we could get to. Hopefully one day we'll have them on again. I had a blast having them on. Um, mm -hmm. And this was a milestone episode, not just a Star Wars film, but this was, and having them on, this was our first episode to have guest stars. Yes, yes. Yeah, that weren't just a cameo because we did have Peggy on as the person that won the election uh, in the last. Yeah, that was just a couple of like background lines. She wasn't yeah. actively on the episode. We had Matt and Danielle help us during the Ghostbusters 2 sketch. They didn't stay on to record the episode with us. So yeah, it was. You're right, Josh. It was like our first like big guest mm -hmm. stars and they, they watched the mm -hmm. movie with us and um, it was a pretty big undertaking for the the uh, yeah. fire pit yeah. podcast we didn't so. half ass this like it did it wasn't the cleanest but we got the job done yeah we definitely went to prom with someone way outside <laughs> yes. our weight class we definitely were getting those looks like how did she go out with him what the he must be rich <laughs> yes. yeah. or hung or just that desperate <laughs> turns out we yeah. have a huge sense of humor <laughs> classic joke penis <laughs> But yeah, this was an, this was, episode was a lot of fun to record. I will admit, I've had episodes where we record and I look back on and I'm just like, some of the cringiest things, like this is the only episode I look back on and I'm all like, I do cringe a little on my attitude towards it because like, and I've done a lot of shit in these, in our skits that are a lot more embarrassing than this one. I, again, I did amp it up a little bit, mm -hmm. it down, but uh, 
for me, I'll listen to this one. I'm like, oh. You you were, I mean, it's not as cringy as when you met Brandon Sanderson. But uh, then again. Oh, that one, I just didn't talk. I was in reverence of. Was it like the Wayne's World? We're not worthy. We're not worthy scene. No, it's like, uh, you know, all those 80s um, rom-coms when the uh, geeky kid walks up to the girl who's, again, way above their, uh, out of their league. And then he's just like, uh, 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 and then they walk away and then he's all like, my name's Jim. I was also picturing that scene in Family Guy where Peter meets Kiss at Denny's and they're just having a regular conversation with him and Peter can't talk. And then he just finally says, you are gods. You know, like he can't, but they're just talking regular to him. Yeah, pretty much. That was me. The first time we went through and Tom just Tom was there with me and he's not a huge Sanderson fan, but I was a huge fanboy. I'd read all of his books and he was promoting the Wheel of Time books that he had wrote. Like I was just, uh, 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 and this is a dude in his early thirties. I'm just like fanboying hard over this guy. I did manage to redeem myself a little bit, but that's a story for another time. We're talking about Empire Strikes Back skit. Yeah, yeah. You 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 actually were able to talk to the Shattered Order podcast guys. And I know I think the skit was good. Your your commentary was good, your reactions, the whole thing was We weren't used to uh writing for five. So mm-hmm. and on top of that, there was a lot of sound effects in that one because we incorporated a holodeck. We had the fun jokes of uh the can we afford John Williams, the lightsaber sounds and whatnot? So, yeah, this was a very editorially intensive skit, and I tend to write those because I don't edit them. For those that like to play the meta game, anytime there's a skit that's low on Foley and it's just music in the background, Tom had a lot of input in that one. There's a lot of sound effects, and there's a lot of uh, Foley necessary. I probably wrote it. This was a very Josh heavy skit. It was. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this is our skit for The Empire Strikes Back. Enjoy. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Jesus oh my God. God, Josh, calm down. You're giving me anxiety now. Nigel, what the hell's his deal? Uh, the boss finally landed us legit guests for the podcast. Holy shit, no kidding. So like we got another movie podcast coming on? Awesome. No, it's um, it's a Star Wars game. I think it's called the Fractured Border Podcast or something. Shattered Order. These guys are huge. Their Discord server, the member list has a scroll bar. Holy shit, a scroll bar? Oh my, okay, now I'm nervous. Ooh, boy. Okay, here they come, here they come. Don't embarrass me. Hello, everybody. I just peed a little. Hmm, (laughs) not bad. I've seen much worse, but I I think we can work with this. Oh, hey guys, I'm Wink. I'm Goodnight Punk. It's them. Hi, hi, hey, um, hi. Um, thanks for uh, here being. Um, I'm Josh. Thank you for um on being on. I'm a big fan. Hi. (laughs) Uh, And since Josh has gone out to lunch and isn't going to introduce us clearly, I'm Tom. Nice to meet you. And I'm Dan. Nice meeting you. So uh, Josh tells us your podcast is called Shattered Order. So what's that about? Like, what's your guys' shtick? Yeah, our podcast is called the Shattered Order Podcast, and we're a podcast about the Star Wars game Galaxy of Heroes. It's a mobile game, which is kind of cool, so you can like play it anywhere, which is great. Um, you know, and it's kind of a turn-based strategy game, collect characters and that sort of stuff really fun but we're looking to expand though and you know i think this is a pretty good space wait um good space yeah so uh our podcast goes all over the game strategies tips big tips uh theory crafting all that kind of stuff Movies are definitely unexplored territory for us, but uh, I know that we're going to do great on this. Oh, yes, indeed. But first, we're going to need to clear out that area over there. Yeah, that's, that's probably good. And then, <laughs> then we can. <laughs> did, did I miss a joke? Yeah, I'm, I'm confused, too. And not to be rude, um, what the hell are you guys talking about? Oh, it's nothing, really. Uh, well, n- nothing for us, but we're going to go ahead and just take over this podcast awesome oh this is gonna be awesome i'm going to do it for your weekly podcast with you guys i'm so Wait, stoked what, what no no you're, you're just supposed to be our guests josh uh, we're altering the deal pray we don't alter it further <laughs> <sighs> this deal is getting worse all the time and it started out pretty shitty All right, I'll tell you what. We'll play you guys in a game of Galaxy of Heroes. You guys win, and we'll leave. 
I am totally okay with this. Okay, fine. But we pick the settings. Nigel! Computer? Load program. Galaxy of Heroes. Wait. Is that John Williams? Tom, can we afford John Williams? Shit, you're right. Hang on. Ah, Star Wars! <laughs> Nothing but Star Wars! Uh, uh, what's, what's going on? on? Welcome to the Fire Pit Holodeck. What better way to play a game than to be in the game? A holodeck? This is a uh, Star Wars. Seems like you're mixing your sci-fi. The joke only works if you don't overthink it. I thought this was a movie podcast. This isn't just a movie podcast. This is the fire pit. We experience movies. He's right, though. We should watch a movie first. Yeah, yeah let's, let's watch, watch a movie. movie. What the hell are you doing? What? Uh, it, it's our transition. Yeah, it's how we move on to the next segment. Kind of like, you know, your guys' as sounders. Yeah, well, we'll be cutting that out. Ooh, you guys should do it this week. I've got a bad feeling. Just, just stick to the script, guys. Yeah, let's, let's watch, watch a movie, movie guys. guys. You know that in the game they call them hollow tables, right? I mean, why couldn't we use something like that? Nope, stop, stop. I only agreed to this because of holodeck. Do not take this from me. Jesus, Finn, seriously, it's your turn. Pay attention. I think he's still reading the ability description. I, I just, I don't, I, I, damn it. Like, why do I need an engineering degree to play this goddamn game? What the hell is prepared? And, and why are there like five Han Solos? Just push a button on the bottom right. It's really not that hard. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'm, I'm so confused. What the hell is a Juhani? I don't understand any of these references. <laughs> are you guys all right? This is so stupid. My blue bar is gone. Does that mean I'm dead? Uh, please tell me I'm dead. This is stupid. Mm, not quite. That's your protection. Hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got it. I got one you might understand. It's your shields. Oh, okay. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> Holy shit. That actually hit. I think I got this game figured out now, guys. What, what'd you do? I used Tom's credit card. Wait, what? Nothing. Just know that we're winning now. See? You finally figured it out. Now, if you can get your debuffs stacking correctly, you might stand a chance. Someday. <laughs> but definitely not. <laughs> well, lucky for me, I don't believe in a no-win scenario. Don't get cocky, kid. Wait, where's Josh? Haha! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Got you! What? I, God damn it, Josh, why'd you attack me? I'm on your team! Dude, did he just betray his own teammate? Uh, how do you betray his teammate? Uh, that doesn't seem like it should be possible. Josh, what the hell? Why are you over on their side now? Um... Well, whatever. I'm out. The podcast is yours. <laughs> Just you and me now, Thompson. Well, you, me, and them. Strike me down and I'll become more powerful than you can possibly... <laughs> I think I'm dead? Yeah, I'm definitely dead. I, uh... Wink, I, I don't think they get how any of this works. Just go with it. They'll, they'll be gone in no time. So, 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 so what do we talk about, guys? guys Strategery? Theory crafting? Big tips? See, I listen to you guys. I'd be a great third personality. Uh, no. You're on the other team. But, but my loyalty is totally to you guys. Hell, that's the only reason I started this whole podcast thing. So, like, I could find some excuse to hang out with you guys. You're just, you know, you're so awesome. And um, if you want to be on this podcast, just say the word. I'll help you kick the other guys out. Um, stand over there for just one second. Over here? Over here? Sure. Yeah, whatever. Ah. And there it is! Not that this hasn't been uh, interesting. You guys can go now. Well, okay. Well, uh, I guess you guys are the proud owners of an Ohio-based podcast. Is that where we're at? Working with Punk's time zone is hard enough, let alone Ohio. Yeah, I didn't realize you guys were in Ohio. Screw that. You, uh, you can keep it. Wait, wait, wait. So, um, do you guys want to do uh, another guest spot sometime? No. no. Uh, probably not. How about a crossover episode? I would totally be down to be on your... No! So that was fun. Who wants tacos?
You know what? God damn it, Josh. Tacos actually do sound good. Yeah, damn it. Let's go get some tacos, guys. So why did we do that again? Uh, Because Josh is a patron of ours. Uh, well, next time, uh, let's just give him a shout out or an autograph. That was one of the weirdest things uh, we've ever done. Why did they keep telling us their office was a hollow deck? I think they were high or drunk or something. We really need to vet these other podcasts before we agree to be guests on them. This is ridiculous. Mm, yeah. Wait, if it was all fake, what am I doing with this? Oh, and that does it for tonight's show. As a reminder, you can find us at firepitpodcast.com, where you'll find links to Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or, you know, wherever you want to get your podcasts. So like and subscribe. We appreciate it. Hit us up on our Discord, too, at discord.me slash firepit. Uh, you'll get notifications of new show. You get to chat with us or contact us via email at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. We have Facebook pages and X page twitter i don't know am i allowed to call it twitter anymore i don't know anywho so thank you for listening to tonight's show i hope you enjoyed it as much as we had recording it two years ago and i hope you do look forward to our new season coming up we did decide to take a step back we're not canceling or anything but we are going to be recording and producing the episodes and then releasing them on a guaranteed schedule so hopefully you'll get them starting at the new year we do still want to maintain a monthly release schedule but up until probably january ish they're going to be one shot episodes like this one and or movies that we just get together and record but the journey format will return um we just want to make sure that everything is done produced and basically in the chamber before we're they're released. Thank you again. I hope that you enjoyed. I said that already. I'm pretty sure I said that already. I don't know how to end these things. So I've been Josh. Goodbye. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Yeah, I hope nobody's expecting an after credits stinger thing because I'm just like done and I don't feel like doing it. And why is Audacity moving around like it's recording my audio? And God damn it, Tom. <laughs>